so there's been over 300 Black Series figures. I mean, wow. But a lot of figures are still missing from the line. This is a bummer, man. So Hasbro, I've done the work for you, and I had the collectors vote for which figures they really want. You're welcome. Because sometimes, it seems like you need a little bit of help. I don't need any of your help. There's still a chance to save Han. Wait, I mean, so let's check out the list. Welcome to CKC, I'm Matt, and if you like Star Wars and Star Wars collecting, you're in the right place. Hit subscribe, like this video, and hold on to your butts. So here we are, another list. We've done the top 10 most expensive Black Series figures, the most expensive Black Series figures part two, the most valuable Black Series releases, which includes everything, not just figures, and the most valuable releases part two, the most shocking Black Series prices, either high or low, the most worthless Black Series figures, and the most worthless Black Series part two, the best Black Series figures voted by you, the viewers, all of which are linked in the description of this video, in case you wanna check them out. And we've done the top 10 missing Black Series figures from the line, also linked in the description, which brings us to today. The the first top 10 missing figures video were figures that I wanted. A list from which I have nailed three, yes, three figures so far that are soon to be coming out, which we have already deduced to mean one thing, Hasbro watches this channel. I mean, what else could it mean? NOTHING! When Robert Duvall is that fired up, you know it's true. And over here at CKC, we took a vote, whether to welcome Hasbro or not. And the welcomes won. It was a very close vote though. There was only a one vote difference between the two. That's right, the welcomes won, one to zero. But today's list is different. The viewers voted for which characters they wanted to see in a black series. So Hasbro, this is a very important one for you to pay attention to. So for this list, we got over 1,500 Effin votes. That's right, over 1,500. It took me three to four days to count them all. That is much more than the 300 plus votes we got for the best Black Series list. Although I did say five or less for this one, so good thinking, Matt. Way to get that done. And 370 different characters received at least one vote. Now that is insane for real. But before we get into the list, I would like to just mention some of the ideas, whether good or bad, that were voted for. So good old Porkins received two votes. I was really pulling for him. He doesn't get enough play. A queen on Mandala and a Phantom Menace Anakin 2-pack? Anybody? Would you buy that? How about a Battle Damage Attack of the Clones Padme? That could be cool, right? The Rancor got a few votes, with and without the Keeper. I actually thought that would be awesome. Or a Bantha, with or without the Tusken Raider. And Quill, with a Blurg, he got a few votes as well. Or maybe a Phantom Menace Anakin and Watto 2-pack. Or how about a Delta Squad 4-pack? Anyone for the Delta Squad 4-pack? Oh, and a Carbonized Captain Phasma got two votes. Yes, two different people thought of that. And wanted it so much that they put it in their top five. Kid Anakin also got some votes, much more than I thought. And Anakin with a pod racer got a few votes, which seems probably the most likely way that anyone will get a Kid Anakin Black Series figure. Oh, how about a Rise of Skywalker, Luke and Leia Jedi training two-pack? I thought that was a kind of cool idea. Or how about a Prager's Padme? That got a few votes. Oh, how about B. Arthur from the Holiday Special? That'd be a great figure. And finally, the biggest ice cream fan in all of the galaxy, not my hood, not your hood, but Will Rowe hood, received two votes. I thought that was Low. But all the votes have been tallied, so let's get into it. But first, honorable mentions. Honorable. Clone Wars Asajj Ventress. Asajj Ventress received more votes by far, like slaughtered the competition. She received a third more votes than anyone else. No one else was even close. But her figure was officially announced and put up for pre-order shortly after the voting started, so I didn't want a figure that was already officially coming out to be number one. I was going to talk about how she won before the honorable mentions, but then I'll get that clown in the comments who says, uh, your list didn't start until three minutes into the video and I'm a douchebag. Or whatever he says. So here she is, the list has started, and that guy can suck it. Moff Gideon also got votes to squeak in as an honorable mention, but since Moff Gideon, Grief Karga, and Quill are all available for pre-order now, we're just gonna skip them. Ventress was also on my top 10 missing Black Series figures list, and it's about time she got some love. We need her in Vintage Collection 2. That card would be sick. Like I said in the first video, we need more female villains in the Black Series, and I'm still holding out hope for Darth Talon, but Ventress is one of the most badass. Who else could take on Anakin and Obi-Wan in a lightsaber battle by herself like a boss? And I'm also very glad to see that at least one other lightsaber-wielding female also made this list. And the new figure does look sick. However, I do have a complaint. As awesome as 
as she looks in her earlier season purple outfit, I was really hoping to get her in black. Her in black with the red lightsabers would be the figure of all figures. Hopefully there's another Ventress release down the line with her in her black outfit, but for now, I'm happy with her. But we still need her in black. The Clone Wars pre Vizsla. Always taking one step forward and then one step back, Hasbro released the awesome but long overdue Clone Wars Black Series wave, only to make them virtually unattainable by making the entire wave Walmart exclusives. Thankfully, the release of the Clone Wars wave has opened the door to other figures that have been lacking from the show, Asajj Ventress being one. But in that vein, you can't forget about Pre Vizsla because his importance to the series is undeniable. The dude just hated peace. Who wants a pacifist government, right? Basically Mandalorian royalty, Pre Vizsla not only wielded the Darksaber, he had beef with everybody. Obi-Wan, Maul, dude was a gangsta. Death Watch as a whole also got some votes, but I'd buy that Pre Vizsla in a second. Number 10, Clone Commando. I love this one, I really do. And there's so many different directions that Hasbro can take it that they would really need to release more than one Clone Commando. Or maybe even that Delta Squad 4-pack. They've done it in 3.75 a few times. Clone Commandos are everywhere in Star Wars, and their slightly different armor and helmet just make them look badass. Although Crosshair and Hunter from the Bad Batch are now up for pre-order, and more Bad Batch figures will be on the way soon, we need more clone commandos in general. Delta Squad and Omega Squad each got some votes as well, although maybe the first clone commando release could be a white one in order to be customizable. Although personally, I've always loved Boss's orange look. On the cover of the Star Wars Republic Commando video game, he also received some individual votes as well. What do you guys think? What kinds or kind of clone commando releases should we get? What should be the first one? Let me know in the comments. Hey there, friend. Do you like this? video? You like what you see? Well, I have more content just like it. And if you don't like it, I have more content that's not like it. So how about you help both of us out and hit that subscribe button and hit that like button for this video. I got more great content on the way. Right, Frank? There's, there's more coming. Number 9, Arc Trooper Echo and Arc Trooper Jesse. Echo and Jesse didn't receive the same amount of votes, as Jesse would have just missed the list, but I decided to put them together because of their similarities. Not to mention the fact that since the Hascon exclusive TVC Arc Trooper 3 pack, which included both of them and Fives, and then the Fives TVC individual release, their popularity is booming as of late. And Arc Troopers as a whole, like Clone Commandos, received enough votes themselves to just barely miss placing on the list. I think everyone is dying to get these in 6 inch form, not only because of the vintage collection release, but to join their good buddy Black Series Rex, who placed first in the best Black Series figures list voted by you. And if they're anything like Rex, we know the mold is going to be awesome. I also think that their darker blue and black will translate well into the Black Series. So yeah, when is this happening, Hasbro? Number 8, a Black Series, Ayla Sakura. Surprised but delighted that she made the list. I stated in the Missing Black Series figures part 1 that I was really hoping for more female lightsaber wielders to join the Black Series. And with Ventress running away with a top spot, and Ayla Sakura at number 8, and Shock T just missing the list. It seems that a lot of other collectors are feeling the same way. Even though best known for being betrayed and bodied by Clone Commander Bly and other troopers, Ayla Sakura's fingerprints are all over Star Wars, from the Clone Wars to video games and novels, and she is even one of the voices of dead Jedi that Rey is empowered by when fighting Super Sheev in Rise of Skywalker. Voices which also included Ahsoka. Thanks a lot, Disney. Although Dave Filoni has stated that Silk is probably not dead. Alo would translate very well into the Black Series too. And not only that, because Hasbro loves TVC repack so much, how about a TVC Attack of the Clones Ayla Secura repack, which would have gone great with Attack of the Clones Kit Fitso TVC repack I mentioned in the most expensive TVC figures part 2 list. Hasbro went with an AOTC Battle Droid, AOTC Poncho Anakin, and a Phantom Menace Queen Amandala. So who the hell is making these choices again? Number 7. Revenge of the Sith, Darth Sidious, Chancellor Palpatine. How is this not a staple among Black Series figures? It completely blows my mind that this isn't a figure. Because Hasbro has slacked so long on Palpatine figures from the prequels, there's so many that need to be covered. We need him in red with his human face, and we need him in red with his Sith face, both of which appear during his attempted arrest scene. That could possibly be a figure by itself with an interchangeable face, which was actually suggested by a few voters. Also lacking from the line is the Senate speech Palpatine with the red outfit and the Sith face which, in the movie, not a single person seemed to question him about for some reason. So this is how Liberty dies. With thunderous applause. We're also missing the Senate fight against Yoda Palpatine. Maybe Hasbro could include a robe with the arrest scene Palpatine so he could become this Palpatine too. But let's not dress him with a skirt and a blouse like we did the TVC version. And maybe we could make the hood and the robe the same color this time? Also, not to mention, we're still missing any Palpatine from Attack of the Clones or the Phantom Menace. But I get this decision by Hasbro though. Like, who would want a figure of the main villain throughout the nine movie saga, right? 
Nobody. Number six, Sauvage Opress. Oh, I love this one. I can't believe I didn't think of it from my missing Black Series list. So good work, people. Dude is a complete badass. He was Maul's apprentice, brother, and enforcer. He also apprenticed under Dooku, and he was picked by Ventress herself to be her mate and servant. Oh, that's a bad dude. And he would translate so well into a Black Series figure, I can see it now. Even though the Walmart exclusive Clone Wars wave is impossible to find, collectors want more Clone Wars figures, and I don't blame them. These new ones look amazing. Too bad we can't find them in stores, and Walmart will shipped them all in envelopes so they arrive damaged. Like this one that came yesterday. Thanks, Asbro. But Savage Opress is a must-have for the Black Series, and if we can get him and Ventress in a second Clone Wars wave, I might even be more excited for the second wave than the first. Number five, Super Battle Droid. It's kind of surprising that the only Battle Droids we've gotten so far are B1s, and we're over 300 figures into the Black Series line, but the want is there from collectors, as Commando Droids, Droidicas, and Magna Guards all just missed being on this list. The B2 Battle Droid is in almost everything related to Star Wars, from books and video games, in almost every episode of the Clone Wars, the movies, and even the Mandalorian TV show, so it's about time we get one in the Black Series. With the release of the B1 Battle Droid and the recent Attack of the Clones Black Series wave with Anakin, Obi-Wan, Kit Fitzo, and Dooku, I wouldn't be surprised if we get a B2 soon, so collectors would be able to put together a pretty cool Battle of Genosis scene. Number four, Starkiller. Listen up, gaming greats. It's almost a slap in the face that you're this many figures into the gaming greats line and still no Starkiller. Come on. Not to mention the fact that his TVC figure is one of the most expensive on part one of the TVC list. We used to get like three packs of this guy every two weeks, and now there hasn't been a Starkiller release in like seven years. People are still paying like 60 bucks for his 3.75 inch Black Series figure, and like 100 for his TVC figure. So maybe, just maybe, he might be a good candidate for a TVC repack too. But first and foremost, the Gaming Greats is a subline of Black Series basically designed for a Starkiller figure, and he probably should have been the the first one out. And the fact that they've released eight, which is really nine if you include the Purge Trooper, and he hasn't been one of them, but we got the Biker Scout and the Heavy Battle Droid first is mind-bottling. We should at least be on the second version of Starkiller right now. Number three, Bib Fortuna. Also on my Missing Black Series figures list, it's awesome to see him on here. And numbers four through one are only separated by a total of five votes, not including Ventress. She ran away with it. So there's a lot of love for good old Bib. How do you feel about that, Bib? They want a wonder. <laughs> Bye. That's what's up right there, man. I was thinking the same thing. It's disappointing to me how few original trilogy characters made this list because that's my wheelhouse, but both Lobot and Hammerhead just missed squeaking in, and I'd love to get both of them in the future. But Bib Fortuna is an essential piece to any Jabba's palace display, so essential that it's baffling as to why he wasn't released around the time of the Jabba San Diego Comic-Con exclusive came out. Maybe they're saving him for the Return of the Jedi 40th anniversary because I can't think of another rational reason why Bib isn't already a Black Series figure. You definitely need to include a salacious crumb with him too. You get two of Jabba's toadies together. I'd buy that in a second. Number two, Clone Wars Mall. An absolutely amazing idea, and one I also had on my list. A Clone Wars Mall would stay on the shelf for no more than a minute before it was bought, if it even made it to the shelf at all. Some people voted for a Season 7 Mall specifically, which is also a good idea, along with Mall in a Mandalorian outfit, a Cut in Half Mall, Robot Legs Mall, Spider Legs Mall, and Mall from Solo, which, looking back, I can't believe they repacked Han and Lando three times from Solo and didn't do a mall. Like, come on, if you you didn't see the cash cow of releasing a solo mall, you should be fired. Mall from Rebels also stacked a few as well, which is also a cool idea. Another Clone Wars wave is basically a necessity at this point, and a Clone Wars mall needs to be in there, no matter how they make them. But please include the Darksaber, don't mess that up. Number one, fives. That's right, Fives, Echo, and Jesse all make the list, and I'm certainly not surprised, especially after the Ark Trooper Hascon exclusive three pack was released, and also the fact that the new TVC Fives figure will run you like 40 bucks. I think all three of them should get individual releases in the Black Series for sure, but maybe a four pack with the three of them and a Captain Rex repack might be a good idea too. Let me know what you guys think about that, but we need Fives, Jesse, and Echo as soon as possible. But please, 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 for the love of God and your own body, don't make them exclusives. Please. Especially not fives. Please. So what did you think of the list? Did anyone get snubbed? Does anyone not belong? What are your thoughts? Please let me know in the comments. What other videos do you guys want to see? I'm always taking suggestions. Let me know what you think. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and happy hunting out there.